like yours, we can continue to have hope. Rodolfo, thank you so much. When we return, a look at the making of the Devil's Breath. Last fall, the notorious Santa Ana winds brought much of San Diego to a standstill as numerous wildfires threatened to burn a path from the rural backcountry to the densely populated neighborhoods on the coast. Eleven people died in those firestorms. And though the news reports tended to focus on the American victims and the extensive property damage, producer Laura Castaneda was struck by what was not covered. She wanted to know about the migrants who were also victims, trapped by the fires as they crossed the border into the United States. Laura, welcome to Hemiscope. Thank you. Tell us about the title of your program, The Devil's Breath. What does that mean? Well, in doing some of the research, Peter, that I did before I started actually interviewing people for the documentary, I learned that the Native American community here in this region referred to the Santa Ana winds as the devil's breath. The title is perfect. It's really provocative and sort of carries a very strong message. Now, what struck you about this incident? Why did you want to do this documentary? Well, because I have been covering the border region for most of my career as a journalist, and I was, I was appalled by the fact that, that it was really ignored, and not only locally, but just, you know, everybody that came here from CBS and NBC and ABC and all, you know, all the big names, nobody, you know, the only thing that was mentioned was a news clip that lasted about 30 seconds uh, showing four bodies that were found near an area in the backcountry. So you went after the story. How did you find families? How did you find the individuals? How did you manage to get stories out of people who might have been a little reticent because, in fact, the migrants were undocumented? Their relatives were undocumented as they were trying to cross the border. Well, I started with some of the community leaders here in San Diego that I've known for quite some time. And I honestly do not think that they, that I would have been able to find them had it not been for them because they had contact with a lot of them. They were trying to help them search for the missing family members. They were trying to help them get back on their feet. You know, where do I go from here? And so they were the ones that really were instrumental in getting me to them. And on top of it, putting in a word to them and saying, you can trust this woman. We know her. They've entered the U.S. illegally on foot about nine in the morning near Tecate about 50 miles east of San Diego. 55-year-old Jose Israel Hernandez and 39-year-old Juan Carlos Bautista Ocampo lead the way. This time, they're on their way back to San Marcos, where they work construction and gardening jobs. But after a short stop to rest, around noon, the men see thick black smoke in the distance. The flames keep getting closer and closer. No fue mucho lo de la lumbre. Serían de 15 minutos o... Cesar tries calling 911 again and again. You know, as a journalist, I've always tried to take a step back and keep my emotions out of it. But something that was a little bit different for me this time is I, um, since I saw you last, actually, I've, I have a baby now, a one-year-old. And one of the victims that died in the fire left behind four very young children, one-year-old, five, seven, and eight. And when you see what the father has to deal with now, even in the interview, while I'm interviewing him, you can hear on the air the children screaming and, you know, going about in the background. And that's just a constant reminder of what this man has to face. Todo su cuerpo tapada con una sábana, cubierta la, 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 todo lo que es su, su frente, su cara. You report some of the 911 calls actually on the video itself. Tell me about those. What was, the, what was going on and what reaction did it provoke in you? Once I learned that they made multiple calls to 911, I immediately tried to start getting a hold of those calls. And it was like finding a needle in a haystack because one can imagine how many calls were going into the 911 system on October 21st. 911. Do you speak English? No. 
Un momento. Are you the person that's lost? Yeah. Hold on. Un momento. I'm sure there was there were many many compassionate people in the call center that day, but in this particular group and these particular calls, some of the men that called were treated very rudely. Um, they were transferred over and over again. It seemed that the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. And the bottom line is that after all those calls, nobody went to look for that man. And there's a very good chance that he survived up there four or five or six days, burned with three, third degree burns, no food, no water before another group who was not a law enforcement agency found his body. So it's very troubling. Troubling, it is devastating. Laura, this is a most moving and important documentary. I congratulate you on it. Where can we see this? UCTV, and probably the easiest way instead of going to the website and looking for the repeats is just to go to YouTube and go to the search engine and type in The Devil's Breath. You'll find it there. You'll find it there. Thank you so very much. Next.